in training camp in Sydney prior to their departure for Beijing, Triple J TV's hack reporter Ronan Sharkey joined them for the day. There are 170 athletes in Australia's Paralympic team for Beijing. It's our biggest squad for an overseas Games. Recently, the swim team held a training camp before flying out. I went along at 6 o'clock one morning as the team had breakfast at their hotel. Uh, it's not too bad. This is pretty good because we're only up at about 6 o'clock, which is good compared to usual. I'm usually up at 4, so it's a bit of sleeping really when we come away sometimes. But so you're a morning person, you have to be a morning person, sure. Yeah, I think you do have to be a morning person, or you at least have to learn to become a morning person. After brekkie, it's straight to the pool for a two and a half hour session in the water. At 19 years old, university student Matt Cowdery is one of the swing team's leaders. Four years ago at the Athens Paralympics, he won seven medals, including three gold. Were you really nervous in Athens as a 15 year old in your first game? Mm, uh, I really was, I really was. The first race especially, I, I really did almost poo my pants. It was, it was that sort of scary stuff. At Paralympic final, the second, second session of the meet was just the scariest thing I'd ever come across. But uh, after that, I think it just became that much easier. The next five, six, seven, eight nights were just amazing to swim in and I really enjoyed it after that first one. And that moment when the anthem's played and the flag goes up and you know the camera's on you? Mm. Is that like... Uh, I had a cheer in my eye in Athens, I think I really did. I think uh, I've gotten a little bit better with that. At Com Games, I was a bit more relaxed and wasn't crying. So after Athens, I think it, it can only be better in Beijing. 20-year-old Annabelle Williams is also a uni student, and she's competing in her first Paralympics in Beijing. Do you get much preparation for things like drug testing and that sort of stuff? Um, the first one I did was back in 2005. I was so horrified. I was like, oh my God, you actually want me to... You just seen that it's tough in front of this woman, and I was like, you actually want me to do that? And then I was trying to hide it from everyone, and now, like, I've done it so many times, you just get, you just get over it, and it's a normal thing. My friends still can't understand, it. they're like, oh my god, what do you have to do? So how was that session for you this morning? Uh, pretty solid. I guess we got the, the Grand Prix in a couple of days, so it was just uh, nice and easy and a, a bit of fun stuff in the middle, and that's about it. How many cages have you got to a uh, We had four and a half this morning, and I think we're up to about four tonight, so just starting to wind down. Both Matt and Annabelle have been swimming for years. As a kid, Matt was so good, he was swimming faster than a lot of his able-bodied classmates. Do you feel as though, being an athlete with a disability, that you have an extra layer of motivation? Um... I do, I do. It really, throughout my whole life, I think it's always been about proving people wrong and proving that I can do stuff. So uh, that sort of inspired me right from the, the very beginning and was almost the reason I got into swimming. My parents got me into leg dominated sports to start off with, uh, soccer, athletics, those sort of sports. And swimming, because I did it for water safety, I went through and ended up doing squad swimming and it was the sport that I ended up being able to keep up with the everybody competitors and even make teams and beat people in. Must have been pretty good for yourself to see too growing up. It was. It was even going back to the days of the swimming carnival in uh, year three or year four and stuff like that. It was almost a thing that led to social acceptance more than anything. I, I think the first the first couple of years of school were obviously pretty hard. Um, it, there's no point denying that bullying and that sort of stuff doesn't happen. But uh, to come in and, and then... Uh, people to suddenly realise that somebody with a disability can actually do stuff and do things better than they can is something that really led to, I think, my acceptance at school as well. Is that something you're still conscious of, pushing that idea of having people accept other people with disabilities better? Some people are almost shielded from seeing and uh, realising what people with disabilities can do, so the more public awareness that uh, we can get, the better for people to realise that we, I guess, not to be too blase, but we are everyday people doing everyday things. Growing up, yeah. was your disability something that you thought about a lot? No, I actually, I've never really thought about it much. I think the first time I started thinking about it was um, when I was asked a media question about it a couple of years ago. I've always been surrounded by such supportive people and family and things, but it's never really been an issue. And for me, I think being born with disability is a lot, um, I mean, I, I guess easier, I would say, than having acquired the disability during your life. I think that that would be very difficult to cope with. I remember I was in primary school and um, my teacher said to me, it was after gym class, I think, and we had to change shoes. 
she said to me, oh, Annie, don't worry if you can't do the few races, just ask someone. And I looked at her and I was like, right. So I went home and I think I spent about a week, just I wouldn't let anyone tie their own shoelaces. Like in my house, I would tie everyone's shoes. And I went back in the next week at sport, I asked the teacher if I could tie everyone's shoelaces in the <laughs> And so I did everyone's shoelaces. So, You're weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, now I haven't finished the shoelaces. <laughs> After the morning session in the pool, it's back to the hotel for lunch and an afternoon team building session. Today, it's painting. So how's the, uh, how's the team environment going? You're liking this kind of thing? Yeah, no, it is always good. We always uh, do some sort of team building activities while we're away, and this is obviously going to be a really good opportunity to get together, have a bit of fun, and hopefully see a bit of paint go everywhere as well. I'm quite creative. You know, if someone told me to draw a dragon, I have no idea what to do. I'm really good at that. Do you feel as though you're an ambassador for people with a disability? Um, I don't. <laughs> That's a point of more pressure on you. Know, you got enough going on. Um, I guess I just do what I do, and it, anything that comes out of that or any big body that's inspired by what I do is uh, a bonus, I guess. I, I don't see myself as doing anything extraordinary, really. I'm just getting out there and swimming in a pool and enjoying myself. How was that for you, Annabelle? You're doing that was a exciting. Sexy Charlotte thing. <laughs> yeah. So I can make her smile. Look at her, that way. Right, actually. My mouth feels like it's had a workout. And you're not overawed at all? You know, having not one camera but two? Watching you try and smile and look at Uh, not really. I'm just enjoying it. It's really fun. I don't love the term disability. I think that it kind of implies that uh, there, are, there are things that you are not able to do. But for most of the time, there are, the only thing that I'm not able to do is have two hands. So I can do everything. It just takes me longer or I find a different way of doing it. Think about where you're going to go after the game. I do, actually, yeah. I've just applied for an internship to next year after Beijing. So I'm in Paris for six months and working at the trade department. So I'll hear about that on Tuesday. So I'll see how it goes. Wow. Hey, well, uh, sounds like you've got your future well and truly now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it sounds all perfectly planned. And, but, I mean, who knows when it will come to fruition. I know. There's definitely a bit of evaluation and new goal setting to do after Beijing, but that's probably my primary goal at the moment is to get there and perform well, and we'll see what happens after that. And how important is it for you to get more gold medals? Uh, not all that important. I've just got to go out there and swim PBs. That's my primary aim, no matter where I go and what I'm doing. So as long as I'm out there swimming my fastest, and that's all I can control. The basic premise for being successful is aiming high and making sure you work hard. It's almost as simple as that.